Hello and welcome. My name is Shannon Kemp and I'm the Executive Editor of Dataversity. We would like to thank you for joining today's Dataversity webinar, Data Prep, a key ingredient for cloud-based analytics, sponsored today by IBM. Just a couple of points to get us started. Due to the large number of people that attend these sessions, you will be muted during the webinar. For questions, we will be collecting them via the Q&A section in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. Or if you'd like to tweet, we encourage you to share highlights or questions via Twitter using hashtag Dataversity. As always, we will send a follow-up email within two business days containing links to the slides, the recording of this session, and additional information requested throughout the webinar. Joining us today is Hernando Borda. Hernando is the Office Offering Manager with IBM Cloud Data Services. He's a technical leader with over 20 years of experience in the software industry and other computer science related areas. He has been with IBM since 2005, where he has held several management positions in software development and product management. Through his tenure at IBM, he has specialized in information integration technology and most recently in cloud services. And with that, I will turn it over to Hernando to get us started. Hello and welcome. Oh, Hernando, I think you're still on mute there. I think I'm now on mute. Thank you, Shannon, and thanks everyone for joining us today. So today I'm gonna to be um, talking to you about the space of data prep, um, what it means in the context of analytics, and what it means to users um, in general. Um, so with that, let me proceed. As Shannon uh, correctly described, my name is Hernando Borda, and I'm the offering manager for DataWorks, part of the IBM uh, Cloud Data Services. Um, so let me talk a little bit, start a conversation by talking about who cares and what is that defines the problem of data preparation. Um, in, in terms of, of data preparation, this is a soft field of, or of the more general information integration uh, space. And uh, with uh, some very specific characteristics that make it different from the kind of, uh, the, the, the kind of problems that, that we have in the classic data integration space. Um, so let, let me start by introducing some of the problematic that um, we've seen here. Uh, one of the key um, problems is data scientists and business analysts are spending today most of their time trying to get data, finding, cleaning, aggregating that data, and in general getting ready to getting their work done. So, I mean, we have, you know, highly um, high, you know, we can um, highly paid professionals that are spending a lot of time just getting their data ready for doing their work done. They aren't, um, that they aren't actually seen, uh, you know, spending that time doing the analytics that they get paid for, but instead they're spending most of their time just, you know, finding and, and cleansing that data. The, the second part of this problem is that um, while, you know, in the classic data integration space, uh, you can find that most of the data is on premise on systems or records. Um, the, with the advent of uh, several different technologies like cloud, uh, big data, uh, IoT systems, Data is no longer just confined to the walls of the IT department. So still most of the corporate data is, lives within our data centers and is you know, tucked away behind firewalls. But at the same time, uh, we are seeing that it, there's more and more data coming from the cloud in the form of social data, IoT data, and in general data that is born in the cloud. In order to unlock that potential of that data, what users need is the ability to tap into that data, correlate it, blend it, combining with the data from systems or records to be able to produce insights. And that's actually driving some of the use cases that you know, data preparation um, you know, services. 
The, the third thing is, you know, and this is correlated to the first point that I was talking about, the amount of time that the data scientists and the line of business users are spending all this time, is that part of the reason that they are, um, the, the, part of the new reason that they are seeing this is because in this traditional ETL requires skills that aren't available to these line of business users. The, some of the wait time, some of that 80% of the time or 40% of the time that the data scientists and, and in general the citizen analysts are spending is because they're spending time waiting for IT to fulfill their requirements. So as I'm trying to get data for, for my reports, for my data science, the, the, the classic way that ETL works is that you would interact with the IT department in order to unlock that data that is, you know, somewhere where you want to access it. And that takes time. And, you know, part of the problematic is that this uh, introduces weeks, sometimes even months of wait for getting that data. The businesses cannot the businesses need access to the data now and need access to the data in self-service. Finally, while data science is, uh, data science is a very promising, you know, um, a very promising uh, role within our organizations, the reality is that most of the data scientists are just a fragment of the workers that we have. We cannot rely on, on data, data scientists to provide all the, the analytics in the world. There is a ratio of about one to 100 between data scientists to business analysts. We need to unlock those business analysts to also produce insights and produce analytics from the data in a self-service manner. So when you put all of these three, all of these four aspects together, you have sort of a perfect storm that really defines the, the notion of data preparation. This notion that users, whether they are business users or data scientists, need to be able to self-serve their information requirements, to be able to find the data, to be able to combine, aggregate, clean that, that data that they need for the, their business need without requiring help from an IT department is what the problem, you know, for data preparation, you know, represents. So let, let me uh, jump over now to a little bit of what we need, what we need more concretely with regards to what are the use cases that represent the data preparation space. The first one is, you know, it's correlated to one of the quadrants that I was uh, referring to when we're talking about um, the problem space. Users need the ability to get data wherever they, wherever it is and combine it. So I need to, for example, if I'm evaluating the results of a marketing campaign, I need to be able to get data from the likes of Facebook um, and evaluate uh, customer sentiment and what the impact of that, that customer sentiment is to my sales. So I need to be able to get data from my um, systems of record like my sales databases. I need to be able to combine that data with systems like, you know, Twitter to evaluate, Twitter or Facebook to evaluate customer sentiment, correlate that, blend it together, and, you know, load it someplace where I can do analytics. So that's the first, uh, the, the first use case when we're talking about blending data from multiple sources. Of course, uh, one of the, the next point here is um, data, while there's more and more data in the cloud, then the majority of the corporate data lives behind a firewall in our data centers. In order to have successful data preparation, we need the ability to access data wherever it is, whether that data is tucked away behind a firewall or that data is in a cloud facility, whether it's file storage or behind a cloud service or behind another environment. I need to be able to access the data wherever it is. The, the third um, use case is the ability to shape raw data for, for analytics. When you start uh, when you start putting together data from multiple sources, 
let's say again, you know, working on the example that I was that I was uh, discussing, I'm getting data from uh, Twitter for doing a customer sentiment uh, analysis. Uh, what you will find typically is that that data comes with different levels of quality, comes in different formats, comes, you know, it, it's in general raw data that left alone will not be able to, you will not be able to produce good analytics from there. So what customers need is to be able to massage, cleanse, shape, and make sure that that data is relevant so that they can produce good analytics. So that the model here is, as you're feeding garbage to your analytics, you will produce bad analytics. So in order to, to produce good, relevant, insightful analytics, you need to be able to shape. What shaping means is I need to be able to set the, the data in the right format. I need to assess what is the quality and relevance of my data. And I need to be, be able to do this in a dynamic way by looking at the data and starting deriving and, and shaping the data in general. On over to the next uh, page. Um, another one of the use cases is just the ability to load data from, for analytics. Sometimes, uh, you know, data scientists in particular, they just want to, you know, access a corpus of data, a bigger corpus of data, and put it into wherever their um, data warehouse on the cloud or on-premises and just, you know, start doing analytics there, with, whether it's with R or other, you know, statistical facilities um, to be able to load that, to, to analyze that. Then um, the, the next uh, use case that we're talking about here is within the whole ecosystem of, you know, uh, applications and analytics ecosystem, then users demand the ability to be able to integrate what I do with my data with things like application development. So as my data scientists and citizens citizens analysts create workflows to move the data from sources to targets, I also need to be able to have the ability to integrate that within applications and control that those workflows from applications on the web. And finally, you know, and again, this is this is related to what we we're talking describing before about the ability to you know use both structure and semi-structured data. Um, it would be the the ability to tap onto data that comes in whatever format it is and be able to normalize it and you know correlate it to data that comes from anywhere, whether that is you know. Um, structured data or uh, data from logs, data from JSON files, data from, uh, you know, documents, PDF documents, Excel, whatever the format it is, we need that ability to tap into that data, uh, load it, and, you know, start building analytics from, from it. So these are the, the set of use cases that we have um, within uh, the data prep, you know, the basic use cases that we have within data prep. Um, what we're going to be doing for the next uh, 15, 15, 20 minutes is we're going to start looking at, you know, in practice, how do you map this to some of the offerings that, that we have within, within IBM? Um, and I just want to make this, you know, an interactive session of, you know, how do you put this in, in terms of how would a data scientist or an analyst uh, use a data preparation tool uh, to get their, their job done. Um, within that, uh, I'm going to be doing a, a small, a brief demo of our service data works. Um, I'm, I'm not going to be talking too much about the, the product itself, but you know, this is one of the services that we have on the cloud to be able to do data preparation. Um, and, you know, basically the job um, to be able to do the, the shaping and the preparation of data is based on a couple of premises. Uh, we have the ability to access data anywhere, anywhere it is, so whether that data is on-premise, and then load that data into a spreadsheet-like environment where the, the key ingredient there is that I am directly looking at the data. So as a um, citizen analyst or business analyst or data scientist, 
I can load that data and start looking at that data, start understanding what the quality of the data is, start understanding, you know, what are all the characteristics of the data, clean it on the spot, and, you know, shape it until I'm satisfied with that, and then deliver it to wherever I, I'm going to deliver it. So whether that is a data warehouse on the cloud or that's a visualization tool um, such as Watson Analytics or some of the other tooling that, that is out there for data visualization, then I deliver that data from there. Um, and then the, the other aspect of this is that process of shaping the data for productive use is something that is iterative. And when we talk about iterative, we talk about a couple of different things. So number one, it, it is a trial and error process. So it's a, it's a process that is very dynamic. Um, when I'm actually shaping my data, what I want to be able to do is, you know, read data from multiple sources, you know, find out whether it's the, the relevant data, um, understand if, if it's the right data or I need to go find some additional data for, you know, modifying, you know, doing, doing my, getting my job done. Or otherwise, once I'm satisfied with, with what I have accomplished, then I can, you know, upload data and iterate over data over a period of time. So I can operationalize the execution of that workflow and have something that delivers data to me on the map. Um, the other thing, and, you know, this slide is, is slightly technical and, and product related, but the, the key point that I wanted to deliver here is that one of the crucial things to having successful data preparation is the ability to reach to data behind a firewall. So one of the key things is security, and especially when you're when you're talking about data on the cloud, you need to have the ability to reach into behind a firewall, um, have the ability to ton tunnel through, you know. Uh, firewalls and get that data wherever it is, whether it's on the cloud or it's data that is in the in, in the systems on premise. Um, let me switch now to the applications here. So, a couple of different renderings of what we call um, data prep. You might find um, in the, the the original thing that the original domain of data preparation was more targeted towards visualization and um, visualization and you know tools that allow you to do to do visualization. So what I'm going to show you here is one of our products called Watson Analytics. But what I, what I want to reflect in here is data preparation embedded within a predictive analytics and visualization tool. So here I'm in my uh, Watson Analytics um, dashboard, and what I want to do here is just upload data. So here I have a number of, you know, connectivity um, to, to a number of databases, in, in particular here I have one um, for a demo. So, okay. Um, looks like we have a problem. Okay. Wow. All right. So what what I wanted to show here, I'm I'm going to skip this part, but um, what uh, I wanted to show you here is the ability to do the the data preparation uh, within the context of a product. Um, I must have done something wrong with the setup. Um, but I'm going to show you, show next, is the exact same thing in the context of a service that is strictly dedicated to data preparation. Um, so this is our DataWorks data preparation service. A um, couple of things, I mean, we were talking about connectivity. And so the, the idea of how to configure things here is you have connectors that allow you to connect to a number of different sources. Um, so what you would have to do as a user here is just come and set up your connectivity to your preferred you know, database or uh, facility on the cloud. You just set up a number of parameters. 
Uh, but you know, in, in the interest of you know the demo here, that is really more concentrating on um, you know what we want to do in terms of data preparation. I'm going to just go go ahead and jump in to look at some of the data that I have um, already. Um, I'm going to load uh, here. Um, I was talking, you know, in, in one of the examples before about analyzing marketing campaign data. So I have some data that I have loaded into a database, um, and I'm going to select that data here, and I'm going to go to refine it. Um, what is interesting here is that now I'm, I'm, you know, able to visualize the data directly in my space. And some of the key things with data preparation is I can start learning more about my data. So as you see here, there's a ribbon that is giving me some information about you know, the data quality for my data, tell me you know, what, what is the number of columns that I have. But more importantly, I can start you know, looking at the data itself on my screen and start understanding how that data is. Um, so I can start looking into you know how to drill into to that data, um, and some of the things that we were talking before about being able to blend data. Um, so I'm going to bring you know go add look for additional data. This data you know I'm going to look for additional sales data. Just selecting it here, add it to my space in here. Then the next thing that I want to do is just come and join this data so that I can do my marketing campaign um, analysis. So in here, uh, I'm going to just select join the two jo join the two data sets, specify what is the key that I want to specify, do you know matching of uh, do do an inner join for this data. Um, and then immediately I'm going to get that into my environment as a combined data set. Um, the next thing, uh, I want to start looking, drilling into you know, how does the data look um, and whether that data is, is the right data. So one of the first things that I, you know, pops my, in my eyes here is um, there is this column called amount spent, and it looks like there is, by looking at this uh, drill down of the quality of the data, I see that there is apparently some anomaly in here. So I'm going to come in um, and start looking at the data, and then, you know, once I bring in the value distribution, I can understand that there is a lot of values um, that simply have no sales data. So I'm going to go ahead and just remove this um, and then just do a filter. Um, so it's going to take a, a couple of seconds. And then after that, the one thing that you can see here is as I'm looking at the data, um, then, you know, the quality scores are being modified um, out, of, out of this. Um, and I can do, you know, some some more additional. Um, for example, I can remove some some of the values that that would be unwanted. So, uh, for example, as I'm looking at the sales region, I can look that there's, you know, most of my values are in one particular region. I can, you know, do some filtering for that for that data. Um, and you know the other thing when we're looking about relevancy and moving the right data, then I can start you know when we talk about shaping, I can remove some of the columns that are in my in my data set. Um, so I'm going to remove some columns here. Um, then you know I can continue doing you know multiple things to the data. but you know the the key thing for me here was to illustrate how, in a dynamic way, a user can come in and you know just look at the data in general, start assessing what the quality and the relevance and the completeness of the data is, and then you know uh, until you know process it, shape it until they're satisfied, and then you know just deliver it to some place. In this case, what I'm going to do is load this data into a warehouse. Um, and I'm going to select the a schema, um, and then uh, I'm going to 
just run the data in here. Uh, hold on. Give a name to my activity. Save it. And then I can just run my activity to deliver those values. So with that, I, I had planned to do some additional demo with you know the, one of the other products, uh, but I think I mean the, as you can see in here, what what that this illustrates is the relevance of what data preparation is and how that plays into analytics. So I'm actually going to uh, cut it um, slightly shortly with, with this. I'm going to wrap up and then we can switch to uh, 10, 15 minutes of questions. So um, Shannon, if you can actually open it for, for questions. Sure, we have a lot of good questions coming through. Um, let me, and of course the most popular question we get is question on uh, the slides and the recording. Just a reminder, I will send a um, follow-up email within two business days with a copy of the slides, the recording, and anything else requested throughout the webinar. Uh, just trying to answer a question here. Um, there we go. So uh, first question coming through for you is how or does it, how does data prep or does it differ from old time ETL? So that's a great question. So the data, so old time ETL and data integration are essentially the realm of, of uh, IT. So typical, you know, and, then, and that's part of what I wanted to illustrate with the, with the demo is that, you know, Usually when you're doing ETL, it's more a prescriptive development process where you have somebody that really understands what your data sources are and they actually start doing coding um, and, you know, following, if you will, a recipe for, you know, you know, cleansing and transforming and publishing that data. The, some of the key difference differences with data prep, which is a subspace within data integration, is the, the ability to do that within a self-service environment. So it, data preparation is really targeted at the line of business users. So the users that do not have those technical skills that your ETL developers would have, and users that are actually trying to get and work directly with the data. So those are users that understand the content of the data, but they don't necessarily know how to code in an ETL tool. Uh, that, that's essentially the, the, the difference and where some of the, you know, the, the differentiators with data preparation is that this type of user, the business analyst, and sometimes the data scientists, although data scientists are more technical users, um, they spend a lot of time waiting and trying to get access to that data, to cleanse that data, and they just simply don't have the tooling that allows them to do it by themselves without having to resort going to an IT department to you know, write those ETL jobs to deliver the data so that they can do their, get their work done. Thank you so much, and I love this next question. Where can I find ballpark pricing for DataWorks? I have a client that would be that could use these capabilities, but the value equation needs to hold. Uh, maybe a subscription per user by data volume, et cetera, would be helpful. Um, so that's a great question. So we're, I mean, so disclaimer here: we're not really doing, doing just a product demo. We were just having a you know a more you know wider discussion about what data preparation is. Uh, you do have my contact information, uh, and you you can reach out to me directly. Otherwise, if you go to bluemix.net, um, you can look for the DataWorks uh, data preparation service. Pricing information is available there uh, on you know how to subscribe to the service. 
there's a couple of different flavors on you know how you, we can deliver the product uh, based on capacity and and, and so on. So uh, pricing is available on Bluminix. Love it. Um, now I think you covered the answer here, but I'm going to ask it just to uh, so maybe you can uh, re go over it. There seems to this seems to assume you know where the data is. Do you have a dis data discovery solution as well? So, so yes. So within, so we just launched um, DataWorks in 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 the last month. Um, within the next couple of weeks, months, we will be introducing some of the data discovery capabilities. So that's another one of the key areas within um, data preparation as well, where you know some of the the functionality that users are looking for is not just the ability to get um, you know get and shape the data, but they need uh, they need the power to be able to find that data somewhere. And you know, with that, our our rendition of that is give those those users the ability to collaborate over data, to describe the data, to tag, to do you know kind of crowdsourcing over the data, so that they can you know themselves you know provide that information and and help on that better experience of finding data. So does it also support moving data from cloud sources to on-premise data sources? Uh, yes, it does. Uh, it supports, um, you know, at the moment we have a limited number of sources. Right now we support some of our PDA, uh, um, so pure data for analytics, we support moving to from the cloud to, to, to on-premise. Uh, over the next few months, we will be adding additional sources and targets and additional connectivity. Very nice. And, you know, as you've been building this, you know, what's been your experience so far? You know, what will line of business users have the skills to do this sort of detail work? So that that is, uh, th that is the major point around data preparation, really, is to provide uh, an environment and provide those capabilities for the line of business users to be able to do that. So, uh, when you know when you're looking at most of the tools within the data preparation space, they're targeted at that particular use case, and definitely that's something that that we have. You know, when we're doing our the, the design of our software, uh, we are targeting that kind of persona. So. Uh, some of the key things there is you have the data at your fingertips, and the tools should be able to do should be able to help you in you know cleanse and shape that data without having to have those technical skills. Uh, some of the other things that are key is what people what, what somebody was asking in the previous question, which was you know how to find the data. Typically, the the finding and the you know doing data discovery is something that requires some level of technical skill. So let's say that if I am you know, browsing a schema within a database, if I am a you know, business analyst that I just want to do reporting, I will likely have some trouble finding the data because you know, schemas and tables and column names are something that are described in, mostly in IT terms that a DBA would be able to understand. With the ability with some of the, the collaboration and data discovery tools would be to actually allow users to describe that in a way that is relevant to a business user so that they can find the data without having to know and understand those technical specifications of the, the how the data is structured and how the data is uh, formatted on the data sources. And is this the version that leverages Spark? Uh, so yeah, so, so you know that that is um, interesting. So uh, DataWorks, although you actually don't see it anywhere, um, is is backed by Spark. So the processing engine behind the DataWorks 
um, data preparation and utility is a Spark. So it's one of the first applications that we delivered, and we are leveraging the, the power of Spark for doing the data data preparation behind the covers. Sure, and the, and the same question wants to know, can I load data from object storage to cloud sources or dump data from cloud sources to the object storage? Uh, object storage is currently not supported in the current service, but will be in, uh, again, we're talking about a few months time, so in, in the next you know few weeks, uh, months, uh, we, should, we should have that. <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, where and how is the source data stored initially? And, and then once the user selects the source, is it essentially copied? So, okay, so that, that, that is an interesting thing. The, the different tools for data preparation behave differently. Um, the approach that we've taken to data preparation is that the environment that you're actually doing the shaping in is an environment where you're actually um, getting a sample of the data. You're working with a sample of the data. The data is, while you're doing the dynamic shaping, it is just done you know, on Spark in, in memory. Um, at the end of the, your interactive data shaping, what you will have is something that we call an activity. And an activity is basically something that gives you a repeatable workflow. That repeatable workflow is designed to actually read data from wherever you're reading it, wherever you're, the sources of data that you're accessing to, uh, and move, copy that over to the targets. So it's basically, you know, a source to target data manipulation tool, um, and we are until you actually run the the activity, there is no data movement that occurs, um, and you know, all the data is you, the user is specifying which is the source and which which is the target using the tool. I love it. Well. Um, so the next question is, is there a data catalog internal to the tool that keeps metadata? Is this exposed to end user to use as a metadata catalog? So, right. So, so the first version, and when I was talking, I think there was another question that was akin to that one. Um, there is this notion of collaboration and social collaboration. and. That is a feature that will be common if you actually, you know, if you actually look at the tool today, there is a, some coming soon features, and this is one of the feature, uh, you know, features that will be, be will be released uh, in the short future is the ability to have a data catalog. The main focus, because we're talking about line of business users is a tool where users can collaborate. And when we're talking about metadata, it's really about describing that data. So as I find data in my data sources, I can publish that data to the, the catalog. I, I can publish metadata about that data in the catalog, give it business description, uh, tag that data, provide you know ratings, add comments, and essentially it's a tool for users to collaborate and what that will give the users is when we're talking about um, when we're talking about a data discovery is a better way to search for data. So that once you have the data in that catalog, you you can look for data without knowing exactly how it is stored or where it is stored. You just you can go directly to the catalog and find that data. All right, and is there an interface to visualize, query the lineage of data from source to target so that we can see where a piece of data is coming from? Not at the moment, but definitely that's one feature that, that we're considering adding in the future. And will the tool be enhanced to support integration activities, like invoking a stored procedure on my cloud data source? Is this in the roadmap? Yes, it, it's something that will probably come in, in the 
in the future in the roadmap. I love it. Well, Hernando, thank you so much for the presentation today. That's all the questions we have. Just a reminder, again, that um, we will, I will be sending out a follow-up email within two business days with links to the slides, links to the recording of this session, and anything else requested throughout the webinar. Uh, thank you to all of our attendees who engage in everything that we do and have always asked so many great questions. We just really love it and appreciate it. I hope everyone has a great day. All right. Thanks, Shannon, and thanks, everyone, for attending this session today. Thank you.